Well, welcome back to our next uh, episode of Angels and Demons, various topics uh, connected with them. Uh, uh, after our little uh, uh, Christmas time hiatus, it's good to be back. Uh, let's begin with prayer. I wanted to uh, use uh, our Lord's Prayer book uh, and use from uh, Psalm 91, which is actually uh, a part of the scriptures that Satan, that fallen angel, uh, that corrupted angel who wanted to be God and is cast out, uh, that Satan uses uh, uh, in the uh, temptation. He tries to quote the scriptures against uh, the, the author of the scriptures there in the temptation of our Lord when he is in the wilderness as he uh, urges Jesus uh, to uh, jump off the height of the temple. Uh, the, we'll, a lot of these topics and these uh, various strands will, will come together in the, in the class today. But uh, from Psalm 91, uh, because of its reference to uh, uh, our Lord's angels and their ongoing care for us. But let us, let us pray. He who dwells in the shelter of the Most High will abide in the shadow of the Almighty because you have made the Lord, Yahweh, your dwelling place, the Most High, who is my refuge. No evil shall be allowed to befall you. No plague come near your tent. For he will command his angels concerning you to guard you in all your ways. On their hands they will bear you up, lest you strike your foot against a stone. Amen. As we uh, <clears throat> pick up the, the uh, thread that we uh, laid down at the end of the last episode, we were talking about uh, continuing to explore the place of angels in the, in the worship of the church. Uh, not just kind of a, a, a side issue here. This is, this is, to me, something so marvelous to, to behold when we hear God's own description uh, of what is happening when he gathers us, when he gathers his people from all of these different places uh, around the, that local altar in that, that local congregation, in, in your congregation. That there are things uh, uh, that are present, fully present. Certainly God is present. The Holy Trinity is present. He puts his name on us there. Uh, uh, he brings us uh, uh, and gives us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. We indeed eat and drink uh, uh, what uh, has been sacrificed for us once and for all. And now we receive it. We do this often. Uh, uh, this New Testament, the, the new covenant that our Lord has made with us uh, with this bread and wine by which he serves us. And the presence of angels in this place, you know, wherever, you, you've heard me say before, wherever Christ is, there is heaven. It might be a, a very modest, you know, underground church. It might be a, a, a beautiful little uh, uh, hilltop countryside church. It might be a marvelous cathedral. Wherever God's word is being uh, preached according to uh, into, according to that word and where the, the sacraments that our Lord gives are being given out and ministered according to his word, man, the church is there. I don't care what it looks like outwardly or if, you know, uh, Aunt Ethel is singing a, a little bit off key uh, or there's a crying child. There's heaven because there is Christ as he promises in the way and the means by which he has promised to come. Where two or three are gathered in my name, there am I. This is my body. This is my blood. Um, uh, lo, I am with you always. None of these are lies. All of these uh, help fill out what's there and really helps us understand the magnificence of being, being in the Lord's house on the Lord's day as he gathers us together uh, around his word and sacrament. Uh, but I would like you, uh, <clears throat> if you would turn to Hebrews Chapter 12, this is one of, my, uh, one of my favorite passages to give us this, really open our eyes uh, as to what all's going on that we may not necessarily see. So our Lord describes it through this, uh, this apostolic writing the, from the author to the letter to the Hebrews. We've already talked about the, the angels' songs in the, the divine service where we sing and Christians around the world sing and we sang uh, with joy uh, once again on, on uh, Christmas uh, Day and the days of Christmas and now these, these uh, uh, Sundays after and the, uh, the epiphany of our Lord, the Gloria in excelsis. That's an angel's song. You know, angels' vocabulary. Glory to God in the highest and peace to his people on earth uh, upon whom his favor rests. And the whole church now sings along with these angels uh, 
who, whose song it is uh, uh, as they gathered the, uh, uh, the, the Bethlehem shepherds to the place where the Christ is uh, uh, in the sign of the, uh, the bound there with uh, in the, uh, uh, the, 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 the baby wrappings, the, the cloths uh, there in the manger. Uh, even as we find our Lord precisely where he tells us and gives us to go uh, on the, the manger of the holy altar, uh, hidden uh, uh, concealed under bread and wine, but no less present, as he says, this is my body, this is my blood. And there again, in the service of the sacrament, we have the angels, uh, uh, the, the seraphim that uh, we, we, we hear sing in Isaiah's, uh, the, the vision that our Lord gives to Isaiah, holy, 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 sanctus, 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 uh, 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 about the Lord God of Sabbath, heaven and earth. Oh yeah, now, of course, heaven, but now earth is... Uh, filled with his glory, uh, comes salvation, comes the incarnation, uh, comes his son and our redemption and the forgiveness into, into these bodies and for our souls. Uh, so we've, we've already talked about th that presence of the angels and how they actually, they literally give us uh, uh, the words to sing as we, we sing and pray with them. Hebrews chapter 12, beginning in verse 18, this is delightful, even the way it's kind of uh, uh, rhetorically set up here. If you, if you just take a, 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 a quick glance at the first words of verse 18 and then the first words of verse 22. We're going to look at the, the whole thing uh, as we, we kind of run through the, the narrative, but I, I love this because it describes uh, where you have not come, so you're not there, O Christian, gathered to worship, but then where you have come, where you are gathered, and then the full description of where you have come to, uh, in case you didn't realize uh, where you are when, when we are gathered by the Holy Trinity and in that divine name. But look at verse 18, just the beginning words. For you have not come to, and he goes on what may be uh, touched, uh, uh, he'll describe the, the sounds there, what was heard, the, the, the terrifying sight of what? Well, Mount Sinai, the giving of the law. We'll talk more about that. Uh, uh, you know, going back to uh, Exodus and the Lord uh, there on the top of the mountain and his uh, fiery finger uh, from the movie The Ten Commandments, uh, his, his own finger writing in the stone tablets the law, the covenant uh, of love that he makes with his people, that he is their God and they are his people. And then verse 22, which we'll also go into much more detail here, uh, it just said, you have not come to that, that other place, Mount Zion, that, that real uh, or earthly uh, uh, physical place. But you really have come to Mount Zion. And here we want to explore, well, what's Mount Zion? And that too is an actual physical real place. And we, we have covered that in our uh, uh, adventure through the, uh, uh, the, the angel and demon uh, exploration of the, the scriptures here. And more sp specifically, the, uh, the Malach Yahweh, the angel of the Lord, who figures both in the Sinai uh, accounts with Moses, as well as uh, uh, what happened uh, uh, a long time ago at Mount Zion, and then what happened later in history at this place, Mount Zion. But uh, uh, just to kind of, so it's, it's kind of a tale of two mountains, uh, we could say. Uh, uh, think of the, the first mountain of uh, uh, Mount Sinai. You think of, the, uh, 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 think of the people having come out of slavery in Egypt, uh, delivered by uh, uh, the deliverer that God sends, God's man, Moses, great Moses, flawed Moses, and yet no less the deliverer whom God calls at Mount Sinai. Uh, uh, and, you know, at Horeb, uh, when, when uh, uh, Moses, uh, uh, as we explored in Exodus chapter 3, the call of Moses where the Lord sends him, this is where the Lord gives his, his personal name, you know, Yahweh, I am, or I am who I am, or uh, I will be who I will be. There's some flexibility in the word there, but it's the, it's the basic verb of existence and being, and it's God's personal name for himself, not just God, I'm God, but I am who I am, Yahweh, the personal name. That's when Moses says, who shall I say is sending me to, to, to do this, you know, which I don't really want to do, but the Lord compels him to go and sends his brother Aaron with him. Uh, but that happens at 
Sinai. So this kind of begins at Sinai when the Malak Yahweh, the angel of the Lord, uh, in the, the burning bush, but you know, uh, the, the manifestation of God himself, whereas the, the bush is burned and but not consumed, and uh, speaking to him as God and identified as the Malak Yahweh. Here is this pre-incarnate uh, presence uh, 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 the, uh, of the second person of the Holy Trinity. The creator of the heavens and the earth uh, manifests himself uh, uh, there in the burning bush and speaks to Moses, calls him, and sends him. And of course, what happens after Moses is sent? Well, they, he uh, bring, well, the Lord delivers with his strong arm. He brings the children of Israel out of slavery in Egypt. Uh, they go through the birth canal of the, uh, the waters of the Red Sea when it looks like all is lost. Uh, but there again, uh, Israel does nothing but receive the Lord's salvation and they are shepherded through the water, literally. They, through water, are saved. And then uh, uh, they eventually uh, come back to, to worship at Mount Sinai. They come back to the place from which uh, 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 Moses was called at the burning bush. And you, you remember the picture here. You can go back to uh, 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 Exodus and the giving of the law there. Uh, you know, we think of Mount Sinai with the, the, the dark clouds uh, uh, filled with lightning and, and uh, uh, this, you know, this sharp, uh, forbidding peak there on top of the mountain. If you remember the movie uh, The Ten Commandments with Charlton Heston, uh, uh, the, the, uh, uh, the special effects of the, the finger of God, you know, zing, and the, the fire that comes out and, and etches and writes into the tablets of stone uh, the, the covenant that God makes with his people. Uh, the people don't make it with God. God gives it and sets it down for them. And the, the classic language of uh, where he first says who he is. I am the Lord your God, uh, the one who delivered you out of slavery from this uh, demonic pharaoh uh, and brought you through the Red Sea. Uh, that's, that's who I am. I am Yahweh, the Lord God. Uh, and let me now tell you and describe for you who you are as my people. Uh, uh, you are people who have no other God but me. First commandment. Uh, I give you my name that you may call upon it. So you, uh, you, you don't misuse the name of the Lord your God, but call upon it in every trouble and pray and praise. Uh, I give you my rest. I give for you a Sabbath, uh, uh, a holy day, uh, a holiday uh, that you might receive my word. Remember the Sabbath day by keeping it holy, therefore. Uh, honor your mother and your father, uh, the, the family I place you into. Uh, uh, respect and, and uh, uphold life. Do not murder. Uh, 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 guard and keep a marriage. You shall not commit adultery. Uh, here are possessions that I will give to you. Uh, do not steal, for I will give you what you need for the day, and, and so on. It's the, the covenant uh, uh, there on uh, uh, that God makes with his people on Mount Sinai. And it's uh, quite a scene there, as it is described in, uh, uh, in Exodus, uh, where the people are downright terrified. Uh, yeah, uh, <laughs> the same Moses who was, who was kind of concerned when he saw the, uh, the burning bush on Sinai, uh, and yet here he is able to speak, or the, the Malak Yahweh speaks to him. He is in the presence of God. He, Take off your shoes, Moses. Uh, you're on holy ground, uh, uh, and you will, you will be my instrument to free my people Israel. Uh, uh, and now, uh, uh, now that that has taken place and the people have now come back to Sinai with Moses and he brings them. And there's this, this, uh, this awesome picture and fearsome picture for them as they, they uh, uh, are afraid. They're terrified as we'll, we'll hear back in the Hebrews text. That's the reference to that, that's, that mountain that uh, uh, can be touched. You have not come there, the letter to the Hebrews says. But uh, uh, they were so afraid when God that God might speak to them uh, to be in the presence of God. They begged Moses, no, Moses, you go up the mountain and speak to God because, you know, we're very aware, like, like Isaiah was aware in the presence of God, that, may, boy, I, I, I am a, a man of unclean lips living amongst a people, uh, an unclean people. Uh, I have seen the Lord, I must surely die. And so the people say, Moses, uh, you go, you go up the mountain. Uh, uh, so that's the picture of of. Uh, Mount Sinai that we'll reference here. The other mountain, as the letter to the Hebrews, Hebrews chapter 12, verse 22 says, where you have come to. 
And here is, you know, the people of God. Where do you come when you are gathered together as the Lord's people, as you are assembling? And, and don't give up the assembling of, of, of the people of God to gather around Christ. There, that is heaven. And let me describe to you what's going on, which is beyond what, the, you know, the, these hidden realities. Uh, uh, they're there. I don't see them. But how marvelous that our God describes them along with this angelic crowd with angels and, and archangels that I don't see. And all the company of heaven, those who have gone before us, and I don't see them either. But are they present? Well, here is a most mar marvelous uh, uh, description of the, these hidden realities of, of the divine service, including the angels. Uh, and it's described as Mount Zion. Now, where have we come across Mount Zion before? Uh, if you ever see a good map, we love maps. If you get a good map of like old, uh, uh, you know, uh, Jerusalem in Bible times, or even before Jerusalem was Jerusalem, uh, we have come up uh, uh, in our search of the uh, the angel of the Lord, the Malach Yahweh. Uh, there is a place there, a geographic location called Mount Moriah. Uh, which is right next to a Mount Zion. This was before Jerusalem was Jerusalem, before Jerusalem was a city. How do we know Mount Moriah from, and how does that uh, uh, bring in the, the angel of the Lord that we've been talking about? Well, remember, we looked at Genesis chapter uh, 22, as our Lord has been dealing with Abraham, the one to whom he promised uh, to uh, uh, save all nations. Through, through, through you, all nations shall be blessed. But the promise the messianic promise that through Abraham's uh, descendants, one would come. Uh, uh, the prophet like Moses, uh, uh, the one to be born in Bethlehem, the one born of a virgin. All the prophets are speaking about this one as the picture gets more and more filled out as to who, who this will be and what is he like. Uh, the, the suffering servant of Isaiah, all of the, uh, the Old Testament bound around this promise of Christ to Abraham. And you remember the, uh, you know, the, this is hundreds of years before King David, you know, conquers the city of Jerusalem, which was then kind of a small city. And then uh, his son, David's son, Solomon, builds the temple uh, by, with God's specifications. And there's that temple, which is, which is what? Well, it's a building. It's a, a man-made building. But the place on earth, literally on earth there, on the mountain, Mount Zion, uh, where God puts his name and where God puts his name, He's the one there present to put it. And where his name is and where he is, there he is to bless. And it's a place of blood and sacrifice. The, the whole liturgy is laid out for God's people in, in Leviticus. And uh, 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 God counting the, the blood shed through the uh, sacrifices, all of which pointing forward to Christ, who will come, the Messiah who has been promised, uh, this uh, descendant of Abraham, who shall come. But in the meantime, you have my promise and my presence there on, in the temple, there in the Holy of Holies, between the, uh, uh, the, the bowed wing of the, the cherubim there on the lid of the, the mercy seat where the blood is splattered. And God counts it for the forgiveness of people as he splatters it on the people as well. The lamb's blood shed uh, until the lamb of God comes to take away the sins of the world. Well, that's Mount Zion, or Mount Moriah. And we remember when Abraham is commanded by God, Abraham, who is old, uh, who has no child with his wife Sarah, and finally gets the child, uh, uh, not the one that he's trying to uh, wrangle uh, uh, through his uh, uh, maidservant Hagar, the, that child Ishmael, who is a son of Abraham, but not the promised son. That is Isaac, who comes through very old and, and unable to bear children, Sarai. And the, remember the three visitors who come, the, the Holy Trinity that comes, or the Malik Yahweh who comes and promises to, uh, to Abraham that, no, no, through your wife shall your child come. And then finally the child comes. Abraham has, you know, sees the, the promise of God kept to have this offspring. And then, of course, we know the story that uh, uh, Abraham takes his son Isaac to this Mount Moriah, which, again, is right there next to Mount Zion. That's where Jerusalem, even modern-day Jerusalem, still is, and he is uh, uh, commanded by God to, uh, to sacrifice his beloved son. And at that very moment where Abraham uh, has built the altar and his son has wondered, you know, boy, we've got, uh, we've got the wood, we've got the, the fire, uh, you know, where, where's the sacrifice? And, uh, and Abraham kind of cryptically says, but in faith says, the Lord will provide, son. 
but he binds his son, his beloved son, his only son, his son of the promise, uh, who goes willingly, apparently. He's probably a young man who could easily outrun his father, and yet he is bound and put upon the altar, and Abraham will, will do what the Lord has commanded him to do, to, to sacrifice his son, knowing that if his son Isaac dies, the Lord will simply have to raise him from the dead, because through his seed, through the seed of Abraham, all nations will be blessed. God will do it. God will keep his promise. You may believe it firmly. It's a fixed uh, certainty. When God speaks it, he will do it. And it's given to us to say, amen, Lord, even if I can't see it, or if uh, what I am thinking or feeling at the time seems to defy uh, what, what God has promised. No, what God has promised, he will do. And at the very moment where Abraham is going to uh, 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 sacrifice his son, what happens? The Malak Yahweh, the messenger of the Lord, the pre-incarnate Christ himself, the one who is going to be sacrificed. Isaac is not going to die for the sins of the world, but God will provide a sacrifice. God will give up what he loves the most, his beloved son. This is my beloved son uh, uh, in whom I am well pleased. And he is the one who is given up for the sacrifice for the sins of the world. Given His life is given as a ransom for the, for the many, which is for all of us. And so that's that other picture of, of uh, you've got two mountains. Two, lots of big things happen on mountains, but here our focus is on Mount Sinai, you know, and the giving of the law and how fearful and afraid the people were. Uh, uh, and and the and past involvement of the Malach Yahweh with Moses uh, in the burning bush there at, at Sinai. Uh, and now coming back to Mount Sinai as God uh, brings them into his covenant. Uh, and declares himself to be their God. Uh, and then also the other mountain, Mount Zion, uh, an actual place upon which later, you know, the, uh, that place where uh, Abraham is sacrificing his son, not uh, because the Lord, uh, the Malak Yahweh su uh, supplies a ram that is sacrificed in the place of for Isaac. And also then uh, 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 pointing forward to that sacrifice which is made for you. Uh, uh, so that's a picture of Mount Zion and, the, and where the temple is built later and where the sacrifices are made, where Jesus comes as a 12-year-old boy and when he comes up for the feasts and uh, where he spends all the time during Holy Week and where he, is, uh, 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 where he speaks of himself uh, as, uh, uh, if you tear down the temple, I will raise it up in three days. And in John's Gospel, we, in John chapter uh, 2, we know that well, he's speaking not of the, the temple over there, that beautiful structure that Herod fixed up kind of nice uh, for in his day, but Jesus is speaking about his own body, which he will give up, body and soul, as he dies upon the cross for the sins of the world. So here's this picture. This is a great picture to lead us into this worship, the Christian worship, our present-day worship, what's happening at the present moment. So take a look now, finally, to Hebrews chapter 12, verse 18. The first, you know, verses 18 through 21 are the first section where it says, this is where you have not come. But here's the reference to Sinai and how fearful the people were as the, as the law was given, the law that is, is great and shows God's love and is a description of real love, but, but uh, it shows us our sin, and even it magnifies our sin because we realize, you know, these we have not done. But here, verse 18 of Hebrews chapter 12, For you have not come to what may be touched, a blazing fire and darkness and gloom and a tempest and a sound of a trumpet and a voice whose words made the hearers beg that no further messages be spoken to them, for they could not endure the order that was given, that if even a beast touches the mountain, you know, that's a holy place. That's a clean place. Let not the unclean come near. If even a beast touches the mountain, it shall be stone, the penalty of death, infringing upon this holiness without having been made holy, declared holy. Indeed, so terrifying was the sight that Moses said, I tremble with fear. Moses is the one they say, you go up. So here's a, you know, the picture of Mount Sinai, that, that mountain that you have not come to. The mountain that, boy, it's, it's a real, you can touch it, you can see it, you can hear it. Uh, it's a real earthly, physical place. But the, the author is making the distinction to say, that's not where you have come. 
uh, that, that place of, of terror when you gather with the saints. But here's this marvelous description. We'll, we'll go through it kind of quickly, but we'll focus on Christ here and the presence of angels as we gather with angels and archangels and that whole company. It's described right here for us. Uh, verse 22 of Hebrews chapter 12. But you have come to Mount Zion. Have I? Well, the author says, yeah, when, when you are gathered around the, the name of the Lord and, his, and his, uh, the sprinkling of his blood and the, uh, 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 the, uh, the, the, the new covenant, the new testament that he has made by the blood of his son for us, uh, you know, word and sacrament, this is where you have come. Do you see it? No, I don't see it. Well, let me describe where you have come. You have come to Mount Zion. It's the Holy Christian Church. To the city of the living God. Now, the city was, you know, the, that earthly Jerusalem. But he calls it here. Oh, no, no. When you've come to the, this Mount Zion, this is the heavenly Jerusalem. Uh, you know, he's not speaking here of mere symbols or empty signs. He says, you have come to... Uh, the living God, <laughs> the heavenly Jerusalem. You have come to innumerable angels in festal gathering. How many angels is uh, uh, an innumerable amount? Trick question. You know, you can't number them. They are innumerable. I always remember a, a pastor of mine years back talking about the the, the angels just uh, kind of you know bouncing off the rafters. The, the place is full and packed. Uh, I can't see it. If I did see it, I probably would become rather worried. Uh, Isaiah kind of worried. You know, woe is me. And yet I am I'm greatly comforted that not only the angels are there, and they're there in, you know, innumerably, but they're they're in festal gathering. We're gathered. They're gathered with us because we've come to the living God who gathers us here. This is a, a, a festal gathering. There's, a, there's joy. There's feasting going on here. Do I see that? Yes, I do have real glimpses of that, of, of heaven now, even though uh, we, are, we are still on this side of heaven, uh, in this earthly life. And yet here is the reality, as he says, you have come to the Mount Zion, to the city of the living God, uh, the heavenly Jerusalem, wherever that place is where you are gathered, that, that local pulpit and altar and font, uh, to innumerable angels in festal gathering, uh, to the assembly. And even that word there, don't pass by the assembly. That's the, that's the church. That's the ones who are called out of the world by God's word, by God's spirit. Uh, created anew, given a new birth and a new life through the forgiveness of sins. That's where you've come. To the assembly of the, this is a great phrase, firstborn who are enrolled in heaven. You know, enrolled. Uh, are you enrolled? Yes. Uh, are you the firstborn? Well, only certain people can be the firstborn, but here you're described as one of the firstborn, and I am described as the firstborn. I, I was, I'm the fourth in my family. But in holy baptism, when we put on Christ, when we are adopted by God through the water and the word of, the, uh, of holy baptism, we all stand there equal as these heirs of God adopted in the firstborn with all the firstborn rights. The, to the firstborn, we're always given like the, uh, the, the double portion. And you, O oh Christian, in Christ, along with all of the abundance of what God gives, you get all the benefits of being the firstborn, whatever number you were uh, born. And this language of being born, is that's baptismal language. It's always baptismal language here, that you've been born again by water and the Spirit. That's where you have come. Uh, as the uh, uh, innumerable angels uh, stand around and say, they're not just going to lean in on the back wall. They're, they're singing their glorias and their sanctus. Uh, 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 you've come to the assembly of the firstborn who are enrolled in heaven. You're, you're enrolled. And there you are, heaven on earth, because wherever Christ is, there is heaven. And Christ puts and promises himself here in our midst. Uh, you have come to God, the judge of all. And there's more. It's just gift upon gift here to the spirits of the righteous made perfect. Uh, 
that whole company of heaven, uh, those who have gone before us, not with a righteousness of their own, but a righteousness conferred and declared and given by God, his own righteousness, clothes them in his righteousness, so they are indeed righteous, made perfect, not through what they have done. And so here's that great assembly uh, of, uh, of our loved ones, uh, the saints we know, and uh, that great mountain of, uh, uh, or that great company of, uh, that great cloud of, of witnesses who've gone before us. Uh, that's where you've come. That's where you are. That's what's present uh, in, the, in the place and location around you. You have come to Jesus. You knew we'd get there, right? You have come to Jesus, who is present. Describes him as the mediator of a, a new covenant. The mediator is the, the go-between. What go-between did we need? We needed the go-between between holy God and, and sinful man. And so God, who so loves the world, sends his son, who is truly God, begotten of the Father from all eternity, and also truly man, born of the Virgin Mary, who is our Lord. That's where you have come to Jesus, the mediator of a new covenant. We have the old covenant that God made with uh, the people of Israel. Now here's the new covenant or the New Testament in my blood. So there was blood involved in the old covenant. And now as Jesus says at the table, this is my blood of the New Testament shed for you as I'm the sacrifice. Shed for the, shed for the forgiveness of sins. Take and drink. The blood of Christ is in the chalice. The body of Christ is given in and with the bread. And this further description to the sprinkled blood, just as the, the Old Testament priest would sprinkle that blood on you, on the people, this you know, gritty, kind of earthy uh, blood religion by which God counted sin forgiven as he received the sacrifice. He gave the sacrifice and works forgiveness. But that's blood that speaks a better word, isn't it? I love that, that this blood speaks. What does that blood say? It says, forgiveness. You are forgiven. I forgive you all your sins. Jesus, the mediator of a new covenant, and to the sprinkled blood that speaks a better word than the blood of Abel. Ah, there's so much you, 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 you bring back in Abel, You're going back to Abel, going back to you know, Genesis chapter 4, Abel, the uh, the one who uh, was a shepherd, who, who worked the flocks, who brought his sacrifice in faith that the Lord received. And uh, through the envy of his brother Cain, his brother, who murders him. Abel, who was the, uh, the very first one of the, uh, the spirits of the righteous made perfect, uh, who is uh, enrolled in heaven. Uh, you remember the great uh, Lenten hymn. Uh, Glory be to Jesus, who in bitter pain you know, poured for us the life blood from his sacred veins. And there's the, uh, the verse that makes reference to uh, how Abel's blood, remember, because Abel is murdered by his brother Cain, his blood is poured out onto the ground, and Abel's blood for vengeance pleaded to the skies you know, for, for, for justice. But the blood of Jesus, it cries something else. It does something else. It doesn't scream for vengeance. The blood of Jesus for our pardon cries and delivers that pardon where the debt is paid in full in blood, the blood of Jesus Christ, which cleanses us from all unrighteousness. This is where you have come. You have not come to uh, that mountain that may be touched, but you have come, O oh Christian. You come on Sunday morning or whenever the congregation gathers around that altar and that font and that pulpit. You've, you've come to Mount Zion, to the city of the living God, that heavenly Jerusalem, uh, to innumerable angels in festal gathering, uh, to Jesus, the mediator of a new covenant, that sprinkled blood, that blood that speaks a better word than the blood of Abel, because it says, your debt has been paid, your sins are forgiven. That's where you have come. And in light of this, the, the very next verse says, uh, so, so now you know what's happening in, in church as you bring the kids. Uh, see to it that you do not refuse him who is speaking. You know, don't forsake the gathering together and rejoice in what's happening there. Uh, even if we don't see that with our eyes, our physical eyes, we will see it one day full. 
but we may see it truly with the eyes of faith that are, uh, have the certainty because God has described it for us, uh, the place of angels uh, uh, as they serve Christ and as they, as they serve us. But we'll uh, finish there today, and we'll call it a day there, and uh, we'll move on to the we'll talk. We, we've, we've overlapped some of these uh, uh, subtopics a little bit. We want to talk about the different kinds of angels a little bit more, and, uh, and the number of angels, and uh, some of the, the paths that the Holy Scriptures uh, you know, kind of uh, take us down to fill out our full understanding of this magnificent order into which uh, God has placed us uh, with his created angels, uh, and as uh, uh, and those those angels who look rather longingly for for what you and I have received, uh, who are created uh, man and woman, uh, but we will cease there, and we will see you next time. May God bless and keep you.